Yes, we are fine now. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Africa for Palestine webinar series. Um, today we are joined by Comrade Misha all the way from the Northern Cape. Is, is it the North or no? The North is up there in Pogo. I don't know why they call it the Northern Cape. <laughs> On the tip of our of our nation and is next to it's next to Namibia, right? Yes, very close to to Namibia. It's actually like a few hours away from Namibia. Oh, okay. Very close. Oh. And uh, one interesting thing about uh, where Misha come from is that there's uh, the biggest hole in. Uh, oh yes, defi definitely. <laughs> so what was that? Tell us about that. What was that? What was about the hole? What, what is it? Um, the big hole in Kimberley. It's, it's the biggest man-made hole in the whole entire world. That's what makes it. Happen. I thought it was just the southern hemisphere. It's the entire world. In the entire yes, yes, yes. It's the biggest man, man-made, not in, not machine or anything. Man-made, <laughs> man dug actually. Yes, that's the big hole. It, it used to be a man. Yeah. Uh, oh. It used to be, they used to dug diamonds. Uh, apparently, the diamond that, uh, okay, now, now I'm gossiping now. <laughs> <laughs> the time that, the, 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 that big diamond on Queen Elizabeth's uh, uh, <laughs> crown actually comes from, comes from here in Kimberley. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, and actually, oh. one of the things that we must claim back. <laughs> oh, all right. So, Misha is from Kimberley, where there's the biggest manhole, and uh, Queen Elizabeth wears a diamond from that mic. Um, yes. As we start, um, those who are not familiar with us, our name is Africa for Palestine. We are a human rights solidarity organization based in South Africa, and we do our work throughout the African continent. Um, we do partner up with other, many other organizations that identify with our cause, trade union movements, political parties, churches, mosques, different religions, and broader civil society that identifies with the cause of Palestinians. Another one of our preoccupations as, a, as an organization is to push back Israel influence into the continent, working together with many, many other organizations throughout the African continent. Um, today we are joined by uh, Micha Moncho. She is a youth activist and she's the chairperson of the Young Communist League in the Northern Cape. She's joining uh, us today on our webinar series to speak about women, the youth and internationalism as a broad um, discussion. Um, hello, Kumit Misha, how are you? I'm good I'm and yourself, Kumit Ali. I'm wonderful. You always look happy, Kumit Misha. <laughs> I'm always... You always look happy. Ah, generally, we are happy people. Yeah, we can't... We... <laughs> We can't wear our problems on our faces, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I so. yeah, we struggle, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even if it's going left, you must always say, I'm very well, thanks, yes. That's how we are taught. Okay. Um, yeah. Kormisha, um, um, for audience watching and others listening, tell us about, tell us a bit about yourself and the work that you do. That I do, okay. I am Misha Mulemueng Munchu born and bred the dusty streets of Khalishiwe in Kimberley, in the Northern Cape province, one of the nine provinces in South Africa, with the least uh, population in the country. Uh, what made me become an activist primarily was influenced by my own struggles and my own experiences. And I thought to myself, you know, if one is to become, you can only try and advance the struggle that you have lived and you don't want others to go through the struggle that you have gone through. And yet at the same time, it's to, cre to create a better world for others that are coming after you, right? I was basically inspired by the struggle waged by Abu, Abu Nelson Mandela, Abu Joslovo, 
they sacrificed a lot for us to enjoy the freedom that we are enjoying today, right? And what is it that we are saying as a token of gratitude to them having sacrificed a lot for us, you understand? Instead of us just sitting at in a corner and complaining, yeah, you see people this, people that, and blah, 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 blah. But I think if, if we pick up where they have left off and in little ways than the other, try and also, in our own corner, try and also advance the struggle for others as well. That's how we, we pay homage to the struggle they have waged for the liberation of this country. Thank you for that uh, short comprehensive by you. <laughs> um, um, tell us what, what, what attracted you to the, to the Palestinian cause in particular? Well, what attracted me to the Palestinian cause, I was actually quite intrigued, right? We were in the, I think the second National Council of the YSL here in Kimberley, it was here in Kimberley in 2013. And, and then I saw, uh, I, I'm not being racist or whatsoever, right? I saw this, sh this short girl with glasses and uh, this, like this very, I don't know, translation. Sorry, Mohammed, but you're not saying, now you're not saying, slender. Indian guy walking around in Palestine this and Palestine that and Palestine that. I was quite intrigued and they were handing out Palestinian uh, flags and, you know, free Palestine, free Palestine. And I was like, well, I don't know what those two are on about, but definitely not interested. So after the council, I started reading about the, the Palestinian cause for liberation. And it drove me closer to, it was quite similar to the struggle that South Africans have waged or the liberation, the liberation fighters have waged for South Africans uh, during the apartheid era. And that's how I identified with them, is that if they themselves were under, were oppressed by the Israeli regime, were able to lend their support to, to the MK comrades who were in training, were willing to give their life for the liberation of this country. Why is it that it should be difficult for us as South Africans to also return that gratitude and return that favor that they, they did for us? Not actually as a favor as such, but to also pay homage, to also try and assist them in their own liberation, you know? And that drew me closer to a number of, 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 of struggles that people are waging around the Western Sahara, the Cuba, where all, wherever there is, there is injustice, wherever there is oppression, I saw it felt that one must raise one's voice, one must, one must be active on the ground and speak out against those that are doing wrong against others because if it wasn't because of the international solidarity that other countries gave to us, I don't think we would have been liberated by now, you know? So it's only fair that we also it's only fair that we also pay pay our gratitude to those who assisted us in the fight for our own liberation. The, 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 the scope of internationalism, the, the activism that is involved with injustice beyond our borders, it, it, it looks to be a, a boring kind of phenomenon, particularly the youth uh, as a young person yourself. What do you think we should do to change that particular perception that um, internationalism and international struggles are not, you know, boring, it's not an international relation class, it's actually real activism? Yes. Well, speaking from my own experiences, I was also one of that youth who thought, oh, it's boring, why is it, why should I be bothered about what happens somewhere there in in Kudustan or in Sweden or in, in Palestine or wherever then, because I've got nothing to do with that. I'm worried now about having food on the table now, and I'm worried about getting this or that. But then it was in a lecture that was presented by, I think, the, the second uh, general secretary of the Communist Party, Comrade Chris, 
who said that we need to find the link because he's very he's huge on he's easy very huge on international international work and he said if you can't find the link then you won't be able to acknowledge or recognize right commit ali so then then brought me to think that if you bring issues home where they hit it's only then that you'll be able to understand the struggles that others are going through remember the the anti-apartheid uh, struggle was waged I think in three or four legs whereby they had a campaign against to boycott products that were coming from South Africa. And I couldn't understand why do you have to boycott products from South Africa? But it is because of, because it is because of the profits that are made from those countries, right? That are going to, to be used to oppress the majority of the of to buy web machinery and weapon and weapons and and build detention centers and and so forth so indirectly even if it doesn't affect you but indirectly it does you know and hence i understood the 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 struggle the the campaign we waged against against Woolworths for sourcing uh, products from 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 israel and then and and then i said but why is it important that we wage we boycott the sports from South Africa, do you understand? And why why is it that they must enjoy or yet whereas the rest of the country is not able to enjoy? Do you understand? So it's it's what brought me to that is us me trying to bring the issues home so that I must be able to identify. So as much as you think that it's boring, we must find the link and try to bring issues home so that they also understand. Because at times we find it boring because of we don't even understand our own struggle in South Africa. You know, we don't understand the, our own liberation struggle and how it was waged, right? And I don't blame some of the young people because we don't even own the media. We just use it, you understand? And somewhere out there, somewhere someone is sitting and then dri and dr driving a narrative that's negative against the government and because of yes i am fed up you know yeah, this government and we act on that right so we need to find that it, 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 it's very important that we understand our own liberation struggle and it's only then that i understood what the importance of international solidarity is and why is it important that myself as a young person as a youth as an activist become part of that. Yes, I might not make a huge change, but the little change that you are able to make makes you sleep better at night, makes you think that, you know what, this is my, I, this, I did my part. So if we can all bring that little bit, you know, we'll make quite a huge difference. You can only just come together. So it's very important that, and, and, and Komet Ali, just in, in closing on that point, is that there is a very important documentary series you know, that I think um, young people would find very interesting. That speaks about the similarities in our own liberation struggle and what Palestinians are fighting for today. It's called, Have You Heard From South Africa? It's a seven part documentary series that documents our own struggles in South Africa and linking them and trying to find, and not linking them, but showing us the similarities with the, the struggle that that Palestinians are waging against the apartheid Zionist regime of Israel. Yes, of course. It's uh, it's called Have You Heard from Johannesburg? Um, those who are interested in it can just leave a comment on this video, and then we can link them up to that seven-part documentary series. But speaking of speaking of uh, how internationalism is is it's a moral obligation to South Africans who went through kind of uh, an oppression themselves. Uh, we know that we are not, we're not particularly only concerned about Palestine as the Young Communist League of South Africa and the many other organizations we belong to. Tell us about other causes in the international um, activism uh, arena that you are involved in. Um, it's, it's quite a number of them as the Young Communist League. I mean, we've, we, we, we just, just here on the African continent, um, one is on the 
waging the struggle for the liberation of the Sahrawi people that have been oppressed by by Morocco. A lot of young people don't know that uh, Morocco Morocco can one still oppressing the indigenous people of Sahara, Sahara, Sahara week, that side. So we need to to wage that struggle. We need even to to mobilize more young people to 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 fight for the liberation of of of, of those people. And then, secondly, we need also to wage a struggle against the the U.S. that has that has had an embargo on on Cuba for almost six over sixty years now, and Cubans are suffering because of that. And we need also to to wage a struggle on, I mean. The people of Venezuela, you know, and it's only then when we can find that in all of this that we are trying, this all this 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 can one say this what can one say about these international struggles or, or wages that we're trying to do, we must find the link. The link here is the US, right? The US is is, is in a way in a, in a way of form wants to be the bully of the world. Right to have hegemony mm -hmm. over, over the world, and any country that opposes the U.S. will suffer the consequences. And we've seen a number of countries that we are supporting for their co their cause for to self determine, you know, not to be told by someone else that this is how you must do things and this is how you must not do things. As much as our Africans, we are a self determining country, and we are fighting for those countries also to be a self determining country. And they must not be told by the U.S. what to do and what not to do. We have the liberation of, of the Sahrawi people. We have also the, the liberation of, we also support the liberation of the people of Namibia. We also support the liberation of the, the people of Cuba. We also support Venezuela and a number of other countries where we are requested to assist. Of course, Palestine being at the, at the top of them because we know that US is planning again another annexation of Palestinian land. And if you are not careful in the next 10 years, we will be speaking about Palestine in the past tense. It will be completely removed from, even Google itself has now removed Palestine and altogether the map of Palestine from Google. And that's one uh, a, a, a way, fight that we need to fight in terms of assisting the Palestinians. Yes, Kumit Ayin. Yeah, thanks for that conversation there. Mm. Linking up with where we, we left it on, on the youth and international um, mm -hmm. and what and many other different causes you are you are involved in personally and from the organizations that you promote. There is of course um, uh, an intimate link between the women's struggle and internationalism. Um, that women's struggle are common globally, that's a global response. Is necessary um, to that. T tell us about it. The, the women's struggle, as it links to international, is linked by one struggle the struggle against imperialism, the struggle against patriarchy, the struggle against the injustice, the inequalities that, that are happening around the world and patriarchy being at the forefront of it, the system being at the forefront of it. Once, in actual fact, someone said, yeah, but you feminists are just, you're just fighting for women, this and that, and it's not that. What we want is a shared, it's not a shared, but an equal society where men and women are viewed at an equal, with, 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 you know, are given an equal chance in whatever it is that they do. But we understand that Women bears the brand of the, the most the brand the brand of the struggle. Women are the more oppressed, you know, even because we must draw our the struggle of women before we can even link it internationally. Just start off in here, just start off, just starting at home. You find that we have a patriarchal system that 
even in a political space, women are seen as objects that can be used, right? Um, we do have organizations that speak for women, that, that are progressive on paper, but when they must do their work, especially organizations that say they are for women, but we don't see them. These women are there for employment opportunities and we need to speak out against such. And we can't say, no, we'll wait for so-and-so to come from there to come and speak out against the injustices or the inequalities or the oppression that, that's been happening, that's been done to women at times by other women themselves, right? So when you look at the campaigns around the world, the Black Lives Matter campaign, the campaign that was raised in Chile the other day and all other campaigns that speak for women, all they want for is equality. All they are fighting for, but it's difficult for anyone else to understand why women are fighting because of the system that's there doesn't recognize them. You know, the system has it's, it's in such a way that people even even women turn up internalizing their own abuse. You know, it becomes a norm. You know, for instance, in our even in our cultures, in our religion, when women speaks out, it's like, hi, hey, this one is disrespectful. You understand? This one, but if I'm not allowed to speak here, where am I allowed to speak? Am I not an equal human being to a man? Or, or am I a lesser human being to a man? You know, these are things that we need to start. And these things must start here at home before we can even take them out. For us to understand the struggles at an international level, we must be able to understand our own struggles here so that we are able to fight for others out there. Right? So these are the things that we need to, to correct. The system needs to be corrected. You know, the, the system that's there, it's, I, I don't want to lie, it's, it's, it's not good for women. It's, it's, it, I don't know, but it's not favoring us, Comrade Ali, because we must fight for each and everything. You know, even just to get employment, you must fight. You know, even just to do this, you know, just even to speak in a meeting, you must fight. You know, I'm, I'm reminded by <laughs> a comment, Comrade uh, Zingis Alosin made um, before he before the Congress of Kosatu, he was delivering a letter here of, mom, of, of one of the stalwarts of the, of the Women's League here in Kimbal, I think two years ago. And he said, but women, you must stop when a meeting is in, right? You stand, even if you are an elected leader. And I'm saying sometimes we internalize these things and you're not even aware. Even if you are an elected leader and you are a woman when in a meeting, you will stand up and go make tea. For community, and you are a leader yourself. You go to when you we go to make tea. When you come back, decisions have been made. The meeting is done. All that's left is discussions, and you didn't even make your input. You understand? But I don't blame you. For us, is that you must understand your place in society and how important it is, and that it shouldn't be that you must be running after men making teas and coffees and cleaning. You understand, as much as they, there's a place for them at the boardroom table, there should also be a place for you at the boardroom table. You see, thanks, Komilani. Interesting that you bring that up. We, we, we've seen uh, that there's been evidence um, in, uh, in South Africa where women um, stood up for the struggle and uh, uh, Comrade uh, um, Mini Mandela is one example. Uh, Minister Lindu Zulu has a famous picture of herself with an AK-47. Similarly, in Palestine, Leila Khalid um, was a fighter that um, even though women are, are suffering the brand of oppression, you know, it's not only apartheid, but it's also patriarchy, it's also sexism. Um, women are able to overcome that and join the struggle, literally lead the struggle from the front that we've seen many other parts of the world where there's oppression. Um, and I think, uh, I think that that still should be the case. Do you believe that as well? well I believe that, yes, yes. I, I, I still believe that, that that should still be the case. You understand? And, and, mm -hmm. and linking to us internalizing patriarchy, uh, internalizing at times, internalizing our own oppression, those women who fought for the liberation, they deserve a place in history. And it's up, you know, they are embodiment of what 
what we can do when we join hands with when female comrades join hands with male comrades. It shouldn't be about gender. You know, it should be about the contribution what you bring to the table. And and we are inspired, myself particularly, I'm inspired by that, you know, Dolela Khalid, she's she's still in a, I think she's in the late seventies now, you know, Comrade Lindues who is leading in government now. Uh, umama 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 Winnie Mandela may, may her soul rest in peace. But they are the women who they are the women who we we learn so much from and what they sacrifice so much for us to be free where we are today. And it's at times it's quite sad of what we have become, you know. You know, when you speak about that, it reminds me of when I was uh, looking at uh, watching the funeral of one of the last Rivona trialists, Ubabo uh, Enrum Langeni, today may his soul rest in peace. There's there's a line that was when the president was doing the eulogy, he said, you know, it's almost 60 years ago when Ubabo Langeni them took a decision. It's either we submit or we fight. It's one of the two. And they chose to fight. And look where we are today. So I think the president also was making that call to us as young people, as South Africans. It's either we submit, but for me, I'm saying to young people, it's either we submit or we fight. We call it, hey, you know, we are defeated. We put the white flag there and say, I know you won. And then we, we but we can't. You can imagine generations after this, how are they going to view our generation? Because we can't, we can't still be speaking about uh, what happened in 1940, what happened in 60, in 80. Yes, you can draw lessons for that. We can draw lessons from that. But what is it that we are doing now to better tomorrow for ourselves and the generations that comes after us? Interesting to, for you to say that um, uh, about young people, if they choose to submit uh, or to fight like other people did before. Um, there's a new wave of youth interest in internationalism. Uh, we see the popular protest in Chile against the rising government, like I said before, the Black Lives Matter movement, where young people are very much involved. And in Palestine, of course, the Great Return March, where many, many, many young people in Gaza are being involved in leading the protest. And, um, Leading the process, participating in the process. Do, do you believe there's a time, there's a time now for, for internationalism to be yes. uh, influenced by young people in the main? Come in, Ali. Oh, yeah, I have you back. Um, so I was just saying, do you do you, do you, do you, do you see that there's a yes. uh, do you think that internationalism is, is getting into a new era where it's highly in, influenced in the main and led in the main by young people? Yes, and it 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 for me it's quite impressive, you know, it, to see young people actually really taking the 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 bait and from those that came before them and really fighting this international battle because. When you look at the system, man, what the system does now, and what a lot of us as young people don't don't realize, it's that the system, especially the, the system that's governing, I don't know, should I say the world, imperialism or the capitalist system, it looks at the youth, right? Because that's where it's going, that's where it, it sees as this is now where we can kill the future of this country, is by around the world, it's by young people. And I'm quite impressed to see that young people, have, especially around the world, are not falling for that trap anymore, you know, for that enticement anymore. To, yes, they try to give us a substandard sort of a education system, although some of us <laughs> are beneficiaries of, 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 of it uh, and, and others across the world as well. But young people around the world are waking up you know, they are, if one can say they are, they are woke, right? But we need to be more strategic in terms of how we implement the struggle, right? Because what we seem to do now, yes, around the world, 
we we see young people going out in streets right and and really mobilizing and having marches and all of that but here in south africa what we tend to do it it we tend to sit in front of a computer or a phone and then we type you know and then we say this or that and then we instead of we become amateur revolutionaries in a way you understand not to say it's a it's a bad thing to understand but looking at majority of us in communities don't have access to your internet and to your smartphones and and, and all of that and where it really matters that's where we should be found right on the ground waging the struggle for our people you understand so that they must be able to understand why is it that those in chile are, are are marching why is it that those in america are saying black lives matter because you'll find a lot of young people in the streets yeah asking you about but if you ask someone what is black lives matter say no i just see people ask, i think I, someone will never really actually give you a straight answer you understand and we owe it to ourselves to conscientize to mobilize and to raise awareness as to why is it important for us to find the link between our struggle here what we are struggling for and those there I mean, America has been free, liberated, inverted commas, for 400 years, and race is still a huge thorn on, on the foot of many Americans, you understand? Us, it's only been 26 years, and already we want to, to give up, you know? It's either we give in or we fight. Yeah, um, uh, following up on, 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 on how uh, young people should conscientize uh, and we should educate each other. Uh, what, what would be your message to many young people like yourself, um, young women in the continent and, and in, the, in the world um, who are involved in activism? Um, what message would you, would you give them uh, in advancing internationalism in their respective fields? What, the message I would give to young people is that, number one, we are the future you know we are the future and we can't forever rely on i mean today we are laying to rest one of the last rivonia trialists you know uh, i think babam langeni there's one speaker even who said it's the end of an era right when is our era going to begin you know and and we need to realize that as much as we fought the system of apartheid yes Politically, we were liberated to say whatever it is that we want to say. Economically, we were never even liberated, not even an inch, right? We need to. And one of them being a whole new education system altogether. Do you understand? Because I have a particular, a, 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 I don't know, man, a, a, a bone to chew with whoever whoever had a hand in the education that is fed to majority of us South Africans, especially in the townships, because one would realize that in actual fact, you are taught the same education that's, that doesn't give you that to think critically on important issues, you know? Yes, we want to go to universities, Yes, when we get our qualifications, where do we go? We go into the middle class. You know, we don't want to see ourselves in the locations anymore. But who must better this location if it's not us who better it for ourselves and for our future generations? We speak better about this location that get, but I don't blame us. It's the education that we are fed. So there's a number of, of struggles that we need to wage as young people. And we can't give up now, you know? In, in every street or corner where you are in, in South Africa, especially in the rural areas, you know, there is a struggle that's been waged against gender-based violence. Be part of it, you understand? If it doesn't affect you indirectly, if it doesn't affect you directly, indirectly, it does affect you. There's a, there's a fight that's been waged against corruption in our communities, you know, indirectly, yes, I don't care. I don't, I don't I, you know, some people say, I, I don't care, you understand? but indirectly it does affect you because services that you would be getting in your community, you are forced to live and go into town and, 
and when are we going to support our own communities for us to grow so be part and puzzle of your community especially in the development and be active and choose to know what's happening who's who where's what's happening so that you are knowledge you are can i want to say knowledgeable yes you know about your surroundings and where you are at because if you don't fight now for for what's right and what's true to us imagine the generation that's come after us how is it going to struggle imagine those that come because we can't forever be singing about we can't forever be singing about hey you know nelson mandela nelson mandela is no longer there there's a new struggle right we can draw lessons from how they fought the struggle but what did you do when things were going bad did you fold your arms and say but ah he's out in what can i say what can i do we can't do that it's now or, and we can't say we give in we must fight so i say to to every to every young person out there is that let us fight for any other injustice that's taking place in our communities for anything that is wrong let us fight for it even if you are a lone voice standing there at the corner you must fight you know i'm 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 much more inspired by by uh friends of the cuban society that was started by uh, comrade chris matago you know in kimberley i think when they had protests for focus there were five or six standing at a corner somewhere free the cuban five knew no one understood but what are these comrades talking about you understand and i mean a number of years later the cuban fives were free and they came to south africa now that because because of even if there were two or three but they wish that struggle it's not about numbers you understand it's about the difference that you make in wherever, wherever that you are comrade ali i know i can speak a lot but i say you cannot keep quiet when wrong things are done and say it's okay it can't be little contribution that you can do please do it's gender based violence it's, it's unemployment it's corruption wrong is wrong it doesn't matter who is doing it um, thank you thank you so much comrade misha for joining us today yeah. and uh, comrade misha is echoing the sentiment from africa for yeah. palestine we we are primarily um, a human rights organization dealing with the issue of Palestine, but actively in our own right, and we are involved in many other causes. Um, and we encourage people to to focus on to focus on Palestine, of course, but also to be involved in other causes to familiarize themselves with their surrounding and fight injustice and oppression whenever they see it. Uh, thank you, Comrade Mesia, and uh, we hope to have you again sometime soon. Shukran. <laughs> <laughs>